Uh, no, for uh, the, the third part of this, uh, I'd like to invite Pascal Lamy, uh, Director General of the WTO, and I'm sure he will be not short of words as well. And thoughts. Well, thanks, uh, Patricia. Obviously, after uh, what the Deputy Prime Minister and what my colleague uh, Superchise have said about the importance of tourism for LDCs, uh, you know everything. So let me bring uh, a few more ideas uh, in a nutshell, starting with uh, an important fact which not many of you may be aware of, uh, which is that uh, as a global industry, uh, tourism has the chance, the privilege of uh, having uh, three international WTO godfathers. The first one is the uh, United Nations, World Tourism Organization. The second one is the World Trade Organization. And the third one is the World Toilet Organization which, I'm sorry to say, for tourism uh, is probably uh, as important as uh, the two other WTOs. So you've understood I wanted to ground our discussion on things which are relatively uh, mundane and down to earth. If I look at uh, tourism, and especially tourism for LDCs, from uh, a world trade perspective, uh, this sector has a few uh, very interesting uh, characteristics and specificities. It's a growing market, and there are not many markets, international markets, which have a sort of guarantee of at least plus uh, five, six, seven percent per year in the medium and long term. It's an area where uh, the LDC uh, market share uh, is still very tiny, like in the rest of world trade, uh, LDC's uh, travel-related uh, export receipts are around 1% of the total of the world number on this. It's a resilient market, and we've had uh, good proof of that uh, during the economic crisis. Uh, if you take just LDC's, travel-related uh, uh, exports from LDCs during the economic crisis, of course, have suffered, but sort of minus 4%, uh, which as compared to other areas of international trade is a uh, fairly uh, resilient uh, evidence. And finally, it's, uh, it's a very little distorted market as compared to other markets, whether in services or in goods or in agriculture. Uh, it's an area where market access is relatively easy. Uh, you do not have serious harmful trade distorting subsidies, although not perfect everywhere. So it's, it's one of the sectors where the chances for LDCs of uh, growing, of investing, of looking ahead uh, is uh, extremely promising. This being said, uh, tourism uh, is not a simple industry. And I will not expand too much on that. Uh, many of you know more than I do about this. Uh, but seen from where I am, it's a bit like agriculture. It looks simple. You have natural resources, uh, historical, <laughs> cultural resources. There are many of these which are still untapped in uh, least developed countries. So, look simple. Just uh, tap it. Uh, just tap it, and then your industry will grow. The reality, of course, is uh, much more complex than that. Like agriculture, uh, growing uh, tourism uh, is a multifaceted issue with, of course, a huge importance for the private sector, but also a huge insolvent for public authorities in making sure that the various aspects, whether it's 
skills, knowledge, infrastructures, quality standards, and as uh, Deputy Prime Minister Babakan said, now sustainability issues, which by the way, again, are also common to agriculture and to tourism. So like agriculture, tourism is a system. And growing, supporting, developing a system uh, is something that necessitates complexity. It is a complex system and it cannot be treated simply. You need various actors, various components, so that each and every bit of the system and of the chain of value production is addressed, which is why, uh, which is why it's so important that what all of us in international organizations, in the international agencies, uh, bring our own stock. Now, the World Trade Organization as such uh, is involved in this uh, endeavor through two of our businesses. The first one is uh, our core business, which is uh, rule making, and you all know that providing a stable, uh, predictable uh, playing field for the tourist industry internationally uh, has to do with uh, WTO commitments on uh, market opening in services. Quite a lot of that already there, probably more progress to be done in the round if uh, it is uh, ever concluded. So providing a global regulatory economies of scale friendly uh, environment uh, is uh, the area where the World Trade Organization can help most. Then of course there's what we call aid for trade, which is about capacity building, which I think uh, Patricia, uh, Deputy Prime Minister Babakan and uh, uh, Dr. Supachai have uh, already mentioned. But there again, given the number of international organizations and agencies which are involved, uh, joining resources, working together, is not a simple issue. And this will be my concluding point. Uh, you have, in a way, the chance today of uh, participating in a sort of a first-time event. To my knowledge, it's the first time that nine international organizations have been jointly working together on one specific issue, which is promoting tourism for the developed countries. You have the list of all these organizations from the UN World Tourism Organization to UNESCO through UNEP, ITC, WTO, UNCTAD, uh, and so on. And this is what I would call a coherence in action. I'm often asked by heads of states or government uh, this question of how can uh, the international system be more coherent. Uh, my usual answer is that uh, the main obstacles of coherence in the international system is uh, incoherence in the members of the international system, which are sovereign nation states. Uh, we can do a few things at our level to improve this, and I think, uh, and I want to thank uh, Patricia, especially, uh, for having sort of pulled together with other international organizations, uh, these uh, forces uh, together. As you may know, uh, the International Trade Center is a child of uh, UNCTAD and WTO. And Dr. Supachai and myself uh, often discuss uh, who's the father and who's the mother. Uh, but let's leave this uh, private conversation uh, aside. Uh, the reality is that we are both very proud of our child. Uh, and I think that uh, Patricia uh, has done uh, a lot to move the International Trade Center on the ground to the benefit of uh, you all. Uh, I think the sort of consistency uh, she's shown in developing ITC's activities, which is not what the parents do, uh, but which is technical assistance on the ground, 
is uh, something which uh, <coughs> should be praised. So let me finish in uh, thanking you for being here, in congratulating uh, Patricia and our colleagues for these preparations and wishing you uh, at the end of this event uh, to go back home with a few concrete ideas. Uh, UN conferences are sometimes about uh, writing a declaration. Maybe that's useful, uh, but what's probably more useful is for you all uh, to go back home with a better knowledge, fresh ideas on how to serve your countries and develop this specific sector. Thank you for your attention. Thank, thank you very much, Pascal. And I know that uh, both yourself and Dr. Superchai need to be somewhere else right now. Uh, as I can see your, your teams uh, pushing to get you out the door. Unfortunately, we won't be able to have any questions to both of you right now. Uh, but um, Deputy Prime Minister, I'm not sure, do you have to leave now? You have to? Ten minutes. Okay, you have ten minutes. So I'm going to, uh, we're going to ask the other members to come up on, on the stage now while I uh, allow the uh, Dr. Superchai and Pascal Lamy to, to leave. Thank you very much for your intervention. Thank you.